Hello, everyone. Today, Michelle and I will give an intro and deep dive of Kubernetes 6 storage. My name is Xin Yang. I work at VMware in the cloud native storage team. I'm also co chair in 6 storage. Hi, I'm Michelle. Um, I'm a software engineer at Google and I am a 6 storage tech lead. Thanks, Michelle. And here is today's agenda. First, we'll talk about who we are, uh, what we did in 1.28 release, and then we'll be talking about what we're working on in Kubernetes 1.29 release, and what features we are designing and uh, prototyping, and finally, how to get involved. In six storage, Sada Lee and myself are co-chairs. Michelle and Yang are tech leads. Other than SIG leads, we also have many other contributors in SIG storage. There are more than 5,000 members in the SIG storage Slack channel. We also have several other Slack channels as well. We have about 30 unique approvers for SIG owned packages. What we do in SIG Storage is defined in our charter. SIG Storage is a special interest group that focuses on how to provide storage to pods running in your Kubernetes cluster. Most notable features in SIG Storage include persistent volume claims and persistent volumes, storage class and dynamic provisioning. SIG Storage has volume plugins in addition to persistent volumes that persist data beyond a pause life cycle, we also support ephemeral volumes such as secrets, config maps, editors that can provide scratch space for pods and are coupled with a pods life cycle. We also support a container storage interface CSI so that a storage vendor can write a driver and have it work in Kubernetes and other container orchestration systems. CSI is for block and file storage. We also have a Ava feature, Cozy, that supports object storage. Uh, so let me talk about what we did in 1.28 release. We have two GA features in 1.28. The first one is reconcile default storage class assignment. This feature allows the PVC without storage class name to be updated to use the default storage class when it becomes available. It differentiates the case when the storage class name is set to an empty string and when it is not set at all in a PVC. With this change, all the PVCs that have storage class name set to an empty string can be bound only to PVCs that have storage class name also set to an empty string. However, PVCs with missing storage class name can be updated later once a default storage class becomes available. If the PVC gets updated, it will no longer bind to PVCs that have storage class name also set to an empty string. And the second GA feature in 1.28 is non-grace for no shadow. This feature was introduced in Kubernetes 1.24, moved to beta in 1.26, and now it is GA. Note that non-grace for no shadow is different from grace for no shadow. A no shadow is graceful if the shadow is detected by kubelet. Kubelet ensures that the pods follow the normal pod termination process during the node shutdown. The node will be joined. It relies on the system D inhibitor lock mechanism. However, this mechanism is not supported on every system. 
If it is not supported on system, then a shutdown command will not trigger this inhibitor log and kubelet will not detect it. There are also two grace period parameters that need to be configured in kubelet for graceful no shutdown to work. If this are not configured properly, graceful no shutdown will also not be triggered. When node is shut down but not detected by Kubelet's node shutdown manager, the pods that are part of the stable set will be stuck in a terminating status in the, on the shutdown node and cannot move to a new running node. This is because Kubelet on the shutdown node is not available to delete the pods. So the stable set cannot create a new pod with the same name. If there are volumes used by the pods, then the volume attachments will not be deleted from the original shutdown node. So the volumes used by these pods cannot be attached to a new, a new running node. Um, and uh, as a result, the application running on the stable set cannot function properly. If the original shutdown node comes up, the pods will be deleted by kubelet and new pods will be created on different running node. If the original shut, shutdown node does not come up, then these pods will be stuck in terminating status on the shutdown node forever. So the non-graceful node shutdown feature uh, allows stable workloads to move to another running node if the original node is shut down unexpectedly or ends up in a non-recoverable state. To use this feature, you need to apply the out of service tend on the node that is shut down. After that, the pod GC controller will forcefully delete the pods, and the attach detach controller will forcefully detach the volume and allow volume attachment objects to be deleted. In 1.28, we also have two features that are staying in beta while well, we fix some bugs. The first one is a secure Linux relabeling with mount options. We have a feature that allows the volume ownership and uh, permission change to be skipped during mount to speed up the pop startup time. However, that feature does not apply to secure Linux enabled systems. So this is a secure Linux relabeling re feature tries to address this gap by mounting volumes with the correct secure Linux context to speed up the pod startup time. We also have a robust volume manager reconstruction. And um, this feature is actually a refactoring of the volume manager. It allows Kubelet to populate additional information about how existing volumes are mounted during the Kubelet startup time so that it will, it will be easier to rebuild and uh, clean up the volumes. In 1.28, we also worked on some other features. Recovering from reset failure is a feature that was introduced as Ava in 1.23 release. It allows users to cancel previously issued volume expansion requests, assuming that they are not yet successful or have failed. It also allows users to retry expansion requests with a similar, with a smaller value than the original requested size in PVC spec resources, assuming that the previous requests are not yet successful or have failed. In 1.28, we made some API changes. We renamed the resize status in PV status to allocated resource status to make it more general and made it a map so that it can be used for other cases such as this uh, new volume attribute class feature that Michelle will be discussed later. In 1.28, we also added a PV last phase transition time alpha feature. And with this change, 
Now in the persistent uh, boiling status, uh, we have this the last phase transition time field. It holds a timestamp of when the volume last transitioned to its phase. Uh, and for the newly created volumes, this phase is set to pending and the last phase transition time is set to the current time. System migration is something that we have been working on for several releases. In 1.25 release, the core CSM migration feature moved to GA. CSM migration for OpenStack Cinder, Azure Disk and File, AWS EPS, GCPD, and vSphere all moved to GA now. Some entry plugins are already removed. Others are targeted for removal. In this table, we see uh, some entry drivers are getting removed. These entry drivers do not go through CSM migration. ClusterFS entry driver was removed in 1.26 release. Both CephAPD and CephFS entry drivers are deprecated in 1.28. We are targeting code removal in 1.31 release. Uh, that's all I have. Now I will hand it over to Michelle to talk about what we're working on in 1.29 release. Yeah, thank you, Shane. Yeah, so for the upcoming 129 release, we are targeting a few features to be promoted to beta. First is the uh, PV last phase transition time, which um, Shane talked about. And then um, the another feature we are going to promote is the always honor PVV claim policy feature. So this addresses a long standing issue where if you deleted the PV object before the PV object, then it could cause the volume <clears throat> to be leaked, even though it had the delete reclaim policy. So now with this feature, um, we're addressing that issue and the order of deletion between the PV and PVC objects won't matter. <clears throat> and next slide. In addition to these beta features, there's a few new features that we're targeting for alpha in 129. First is a change block tracking. This feature provides a common API to get the incremental blocks that have changed between two volume snapshots. And this feature is intended for block-based storage and is uh, going to be used by backup software to be able to take efficient backups. So if you're interested in this feature, uh, please join the Data Protection Working Group to learn more and get involved. Another new feature that we plan to introduce is uh, modifiable PVCs. This lets you modify certain volume attributes that are supported by the storage provider, such as IOPS and throughput. There will be a new object called the volume attributes class that is very similar in concept to a storage class but it has the property that you can modify the PV object in order to um, change to a different volume attributes class. So let's see an example of how this will look. The next slide. Um, so here in this example, we define two different volume attribute classes, silver and gold and each of them specify different IOPS parameters. And then the PVC is first created with the silver class. Um, then at some time later, it turns out that we need more performance. And so then we update the PVC object to point to the gold class. And when this happens, um, Kubernetes will make uh, a new modified volume call to the CSI driver. And then the CSI driver will then update the underlying volume with the new attributes. 
So be on the lookout for this new feature, and we would love to hear your feedback. Next slide. Um, so beyond these features, we have more projects that are in prototyping and design phases. Um, we would love to get your early thoughts and help on, on these features. First is volume expansion for stateful sets. This is a long ass feature um, to be able to update the PVC template in the stateful set in order to trigger volume expansion. Um, at least today, the only way to resize the volumes uh, being used by stateful sets is to modify the PVCs directly. Um, and then the next feature is storage capacity scoring. This is an extension of the capacity tracking feature that is primarily designed to uh, make the scheduler aware of local volume um, provisioning capacity. And so this enhancement will enhance, will add the uh, priority rules to the scheduler um, so that you can configure the, the scheduler to either try to do bin packing or even spreading in for dynamic provisioning of these volumes. Um, lastly, we have an ongoing investigation um, to consolidate our CSI sidecars into a single component. This has many benefits, such as simplifying our release process um, so that we can get releases out quicker and in addition, do regular patch releases of these sidecars, which is not something we can easily to do today across our 10 different repos. In addition, um, combining the sidecars into a single binary also can um, improve the overall resource consumption that these sidecars uh, require today. Um, we can do things like share, share watchers and caches and, and use shared informers to reduce the overall resource usage. Um, and so there's, there's going to be a lot of um, work that needs to be done in order to accomplish this. And so we're going to need a lot of help. If anyone is interested in looking for ways to contribute to the SIG, this will be a good project to get started in. Next slide. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, there are a lot of different projects and features that we are working on in the SIG. And we always welcome help. So if any of these projects sound interesting to you, please reach out to us through our Slack channel or join one of our sick meetings that happen every week, every two weeks. All right, so that concludes our presentation today. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the SIG. Thank you.